Hey kids, it's the Mr. Flyer here, hope you're well. I'm out and about on another bike review. Today, something very, very unusual, because this is the Honda XADV. It's kind of a, a, a motorcycle that thinks it's a scooter sort of thing. It's uh, difficult to categorise, but uh, I'll show you around the bike on this video and let you know what I think of it, and we'll see if we can come up with uh, some sort of consensus as to exactly what this machine is. Stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so the uh, XADV is one of those bikes that very much has to have you recalibrate your brain if you're used to riding a normal motorcycle, and by normal motorcycle I mean one with gears and a clutch etc, because this bike is fitted with Honda's brilliant dual clutch transmission. So even though it looks a bit like a scooter, underneath the scooter-esque cladding it's really uh, more like the uh, Honda NC750, the DCT bike, or something like even the Africa Twin with DCT. It actually has a 750cc motorcycle engine with dual clutch transmission as opposed to the sort of um, the variable transmission that you get on a scooter that uses a belt and uh, cones to change the gear ratios. This actually does have a gearbox, but it's effectively automatic. So there's no clutch on it. Uh, so there's no foot pedals, there's no foot brake. What they've done is remove the clutch lever and put uh, the back brake on the top here, just like a scooter. When you've got the thing in drive mode, you just twist and go, just like a scooter. Uh, and hence, if you're a scooter rider, and you're maybe thinking about moving up to motorcycles. This potentially is a, is a one way to go. If you like all the convenience of a scooter, the fact that you're, you know, you've got all the weather protection, your feet are up on the footboards, you've got the under seat storage that you get on a scooter, uh, and everything else about the convenience. If you're riding in town, and here I am on the edge of West London, where scooters really do come into their own, then this is, uh, you know, is a is a viable alternative. And similarly, if you like your motorbikes, you like the performance and handling of motorcycles, but you fancy a bit of the convenience of a scooter, then again, this is possibly something you might consider. Because, uh, as I say, it's got the 750cc engine, puts out something like 54 brake horsepower. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not a wimpy piece of kit by any means. It sounds great as well, it sounds better than any scooter I've heard. So, so much for what it is then, but uh, how does the thing feel when you're riding it? Well, it feels great actually. The uh, handlebars are nice and wide, very comfortable. You're sitting upright, of course, not in the upright sense that you would be if you're on like an adventure bike uh, where, you're, where your legs are at the side of you and tucked under you. In this case, it's more like sitting on a chair because your knees very much folded up in front of you just like a scooter. Uh, but that actually makes for a very comfy riding position in the urban environment. I've never ridden a bike in this position for hundreds of miles, so I don't know what that would do for your back. Uh, when I recently did a scooter review, I had a number of comments that, of people that said on long journeys that you can get a bit of pain in your back, so I don't know if that's true or not, but it's something to bear in mind. But certainly, I'm finding this extremely comfortable. Handlebars, I say, nice and wide, so you've got a, a good feeling of control. The mirrors on this are pretty decent mirrors actually. Again they're nice and wide apart because of the wide handlebars but looking in the right one which is the one you tend to use most I'm not looking at my elbows or shoulders I'm actually looking at the view behind which is a you know makes a real nice change. So those work a treat. It's got this big old windscreen on here which is uh, manually adjustable via this knob here. It's something you do uh, when you're stationary it's not something you can do on the fly. Uh, but there is uh, some degree of adjustability there, so it remains to be seen when I get on a faster bit of road in a minute how good the wind protection is off of that. It's got this really funky dash on here that's absolutely laden with, uh, with information. Pleased to see it's got a proper fuel gauge, but uh, everything else you could possibly want is on there as well. And although at first glance it looks a little bit busy, it's actually got everything there that, uh, that you're likely to want. Now this bike, although it's a Honda, of course a Japanese firm, it was designed uh, by the Italian Design House. And it kind of shows, because it, it has got funky styling, and I'll show you that obviously when we do the walk around. Uh, but it's uh, the XADV moniker comes from both Advanced and Adventure, and it's sort of styled, according to the marketing blurb, as an adventure uh, beast, in that it can do a bit of off-roading if you want to. Uh, and I was watching some videos when I was researching this review about the bike and one of the Italian designers was saying that he was inspired to design this bike by when he went on holiday in Greece and he hired a scooter uh, and he was going to go to the beach with his wife but they got so far and then they got to a dirt track which led down to the beach and they couldn't go any further and that frustrated him so he thought wouldn't it be great if you could have a bike that had all the convenience of a scooter who could go off-road as well and that's kind of what inspired them to build the XADV I don't know if that's true or not but uh, quite a good story 
it's really strange as somebody that uh, <laughs> is so used to riding conventional motorcycles not having to worry about gear changes and so on it does make for a very relaxed ride it has to be said right we're coming on to a little bit of a faster stretch of road unfortunately it's uh, speed limited at the moment to 50 miles an hour so I can't uh, really wind it up for a good test of uh, what this would be like on a motorway at this point but coming down here at 50 the uh, the weather protection on this is absolutely fine I'm not getting any uh, horrible turbulence off this screen in fact if I use my hand I can feel where the airflow is coming and it's way above my helmet uh, I think this is not quite in the most upright position at the moment but yeah it's doing a good job of keeping the uh, the wind off my face so the weather protection on this is lovely sounds absolutely brilliant when you wind her up sounds like a throaty motorcycle the brakes on her front brakes seem okay back brakes are particularly sharp I must say the handling on this is absolutely beautiful it does handle very much like a motorcycle and not a lot like a scooter as I say the architecture of the bike in terms of the engine the swing arm etc has very much more in common with a motorcycle than it does with a scooter which from a handling perspective is a good thing so this bike cost wise on the road something like nine and a half thousand pounds so it's an expensive machine if you're kind of in the scooter mindset uh, and so I suppose you have to compare it with things like the Maxi scooters, the Bergmans and so on. Or indeed compare it against motorcycles like things like the Yamaha Tracer. It's in that sort of ballpark. So it's certainly a premium device. So here we go, here's a chance to uh, open the bike up a bit more. Right, no effort at all to get to 70 on this piece of dual carriageway. And it feels like it's got an awful lot more to give. The dual clutch transmission is a piece of absolute witchcraft it works seamlessly you don't even detect the bike changing cogs very impressive i rode the africa twin with the dct technology a while back and i was similarly impressed with that i think if you're after a bit of urban transport uh, and your commute involves some faster roads then this would definitely be a better proposition than a scooter because on things like that bit of dual carriageway you can certainly keep up with the fastest traffic this has no lack of uh, power whatsoever in fact it feels more powerful than its 54 brake horsepower headline figure would belie and you're certainly always going to win the uh, headlight drag or sorry the traffic light drag race if that's if that's your game yeah it really is quite rewarding around here i mean look i'm, I'm up to actually I'm just go slightly over the speed limit there by mistake very quickly it's a performant little bike this the suspension on it is really quite um i suppose it's towards the harder end of the spectrum which aids in the handling very much but it's certainly not a soft ride but that is counteracted by the seat which is nice and comfortable it's nice and wide as of course scooter seats are and it's nice and padded so it's comfy on the old backside but actually something i forgot to mention which i should just point out here you can see it says i'm in d at the moment drive mode i can change that by pressing this button on the right here to s which is sport mode and that basically makes the uh, throttle a bit more um, sensitive. It also changes the gear ratio slightly. So it just makes the ride a little bit more sporty. Changes the engine braking as well. Just gives you a little bit more option for some fun riding. And yeah, it definitely makes a marked performance to the way the vehicle picks up as well. Much more snappy acceleration in sport mode. The switch gear on this is all typically Honda quality. It's proper switch gear, it's not the sort of PCB stuff that just touches on a printed circuit board that gives you no, no feedback. It's these proper switches that you can feel they've got a good tactile nature to them, uh, and I like that. Right, what I need is a good pub car park or something, so I can show you around the bike and talk you through the spec. See if there's a spot in here that I can uh, park up and do the walk around. Let's have a look. Well, it's meant to be an adventure bike, so let's do a bit of off-road. <laughs> so here we are, and unlike a scooter, on this you do need to select, well you don't have to select neutral, but you can select neutral when you stop to, to stop anywhere on the dual clutch transmission. Similarly, if you're in drive, like there you go, I'm in drive again now, if you just put the stand down, if I can find it, it not only does it shut the bike off, but it puts it automatically into neutral, so it's very clever this. And then to sort of uh, kill the bike, or you know, turn it off, so to speak, just go to the off position. There we are. 
Okay, so here she is. The Honda XADV. I think it's a funky looking thing. It's, uh, you know, sort of scootery, sort of adventure -y, sort of Africa twinny. Uh, interesting. Anyway, let me get the, uh, the phone out and the other camera and uh, I'll talk you through the spec. Okay, here we go then. This is the uh, Honda XADV, which according to the marketing blurb, Honda described with as a crossover style adventure machine in a class of its own. ADV standing, as I say, for adventure and advanced. And uh, it certainly looks different to uh, anything I've seen before. You can see that it's got a sort of a scooter-esque line and things like, you know, the big seat, which has a load of storage underneath it. You can get your helmet under there, I think. Um, is very scooter-like. Uh, the wheels are relatively small, again, scooter-like. Uh, the ease of riding the thing, the fact that you don't have a clutch uh, and you've got the back brake uh, attached to the left-hand um, handlebar, all very much scooter-like. But when you look at the architecture of it, it's very much more motorcycle-like. So if we look down here, it's got a conventional swing arm on there. Uh, and, you know, the, the engine's nowhere to be seen at the back end. The engine is in the usual motorcycle place underneath all that coverage there. So... Uh, Really, as I say, it's more motorcycle than it is scooter, but it's got this sort of rugged look about it. I think it looks really cute. Okay, so in terms of the spec then, it's a 745cc twin cylinder engine. As I say, the dual clutch transmission, and it's uh, chain driven. So again, unlike a scooter, which is tend to be belt driven, the chain is enclosed in that uh, chain guard though. Uh, so it should keep some of the crud off, but I don't know how that's going to be for if you want to look after it yourself, cleaning it and maintaining it might be a bit more of a hassle on this. In terms of its power, the uh, website says puts at 40.3 kilowatts. I looked that up, that's 54 brake horsepower at 6,250 RPM. Torque 68 Newton meters at 4,750. So it's all usable power on this. Two channel ABS, so uh, front and back wheel. And if we look at the brakes on the front here, we can see it's got uh, decent Nissan brakes, twin disc setup, very powerful. And at the back end, we've got Nissan brakes again, single disc. Uh, with, I'm not sure what that is at the bottom there. I guess that's uh, this setup here, which looks like another caliper. No idea what that is. Be interested to know if anyone knows. And the brake caliper is at the top. So very interesting. Maybe it's something to do with the ABS, but uh, who knows? Perhaps it's the parking brake actually thinking about it. Alrighty, the uh, seat height is 820 millimeters. Very comfy seat, not particularly low. Uh, but no problem getting your feet down because they've sculpted it at the front so it's quite narrow and of course your feet sit on these footboards as opposed to pegs and you've got two positions to put your feet so it's very comfy. Uh, the weight of the bike, 238 kilograms wet which sounds quite heavy but uh, the centre of gravity is very low uh, and therefore it doesn't feel like a heavy bike when you're riding it. Tank capacity 13.1 litres uh, and the fuel again a bit like a scooter uh, the fuel cap is actually under here. Uh, so good tank capacity and uh, I imagine it'll be quite a frugal machine. I don't know what the mile per gallon figure is, but I imagine it'll be pretty cheap to run. Uh, headlamps are twin LED headlamps. It's got a 12 volt socket under the seat. Um, and as I say, price 9599 according to the website. Uh, the other blurb that I looked up says that things like the instrument display is a rally style instrument display. It's got a bit, of, you know, reminds me of something you might find in the Dakar rally actually. But it works really well as I said and then the switch gear is all this good quality stuff that you expect from Honda. Uh, nothing too complicated about how it works. And then you've got this switch in the middle here, this rotating one, which basically brings the bike alive. It's keyless um, ignition on this so you just have the key fob in your pocket as usual. And then it does its own thing. Uh, comes in four colours by the way. This is the matte silver. There's also a red and silver metallic and a white with red accents. I think this is possibly my least favourite of the colour schemes. I like the... Uh, uh, white with red accents. Okay, uh, I think that's it for the walk around. Oh, let's just show you the uh, the rear pegs here, which I think look really good. There we go, sort of integrated into the frame. Why don't more motorcycles do things like that? It just looks good. So the Starling overall, top marks for the Starling, I think. Right, that's that. Let's jump back on, do a bit more riding. Right then, let's uh, get this machine fired up again then. Quite a short stand, but got a good uh, little lever on the side to flick up. So let's activate the bike again by pressing the machine. Turn it into the on position. There we go. And then we, we're in neutral, as I say. It's all automatically selected that for us. 
and we can start in the usual way. There we go. Right now, unlike a scooter, I can't, you know, I, I can sit and rev this. Couldn't do that in a scooter because you'd be off. So in this one, you have to actually select drive by pressing the drive button there. There you go, you see we've got drive there. And now when I twist, we're off. Okay. Now it is a rugged style bike and uh, you know, the marketing would have you believe you can go off-road on it. I think if I were to go off-road on it, I want a little bit more knobbly tyres, but uh, it's got good suspension travel and it is designed for that, so no reason why you couldn't attack the odd green lane, but I'm not gonna try that today. <laughs> So I must just uh, thank Kevin and the guys at HGB Motorcycles in Ryslip in London for letting me borrow the bike to do this review. They're the local Honda dealer for the area. If you live, live around this area or sort of within 20 miles of Uxbridge, go and check them out. Loads of bikes there, friendly bunch of guys. Mention my name, I'm sure they'll help you out. <laughs> so that's uh, pretty much it for my uh, initial impressions review of the Honda XADV. Very interesting little bike, I have to say. Uh, aimed at, uh, well, I'm not quite sure what section of the market is aimed at because it's sort of that in between thing, as I say, you can think of it as a, as a motorbike, you can think of it as a scooter. You could say it's got the best of both worlds, it's got the convenience, it's got the weather protection, it's got the uh, storage facilities of a scooter, yet it's got handling that's more akin and performance that's more akin to a motorcycle. So if maybe you're in that sort of in-betweeny area, this would be something that's well worth checking out. Or even if you haven't ridden a bike before and you want to go for something a bit bigger and you've got your full license then this is something to look at if you just like the sort of funky styling and the convenience that this offers certainly there's absolutely nothing wrong with the way the, the bike handles the smaller wheels you can actually feel um if you're used to riding a motorcycle they do feel a little bit uh, odder in the handling department but everything about the bike performs really nicely the brakes are very good she's very comfortable as you'd expect the mirrors work well suspension Makes the handling quite nice. Uh, the, I'm very impressed with the screen, no buffeting off that. I guess for me, the, the big downside is perhaps it's a little bit pricey. For nine and a half grand, I think I'll be more looking towards something like a Yamaha Tracer personally. But if you want the convenience, of course, of DCT and not having to bother with a clutch and so on, then those options aren't open to you. But a really funky looking little thing, and I think, well, it's not that little to be fair, a really uh, nicely designed bike. I think hats off to Honda for trying something a little bit different. It's nice that we've got a motorcycle market at the moment where there is so much choice of different types of motorbikes that you can go for. Okay, I hope you've uh, enjoyed that video and it's been of some interest to you. If you have and it's the first time you've been along, then uh, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. It'd be great to have you along for some more of this stuff soon. I produce videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Okay, I look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.